So I thought I'd take a minute just to talk about uh, the top productivity tools I'm using here in 2021. Some of these are old, some are new. Uh, just kind of a quick rundown of the main tools I use every day beyond email and calendar and some of that, which I think is pretty standard and everyone can use what they want for those. So some quick thoughts here for notes. I really like Google Keep. I've been using it for a while, still like Google Keep, mostly because it's cross-platform. I can use it um, here on my Windows desktop. I can use it on Chromebook. If I were to switch to Mac at some point, I could use it, iPhone, Android. Uh, it integrates great with uh, Android Auto in the car, so I can say the magic words and take a note. Just while I'm driving, I don't have to touch anything. I press the steering wheel button, take a note. It shows up in Google Keep. I personally don't store stuff in Google Keep. I use it as kind of a quick place for notes, and then I try to empty it out, kind of my inbox. I try to keep Google Keep emptied most days into tools like Notion and Roam that we'll talk about in a bit. But it's a great tool for just quick capture as I go about my day. Um, in terms of saving things longer term, the two big ones I use are Notion and Roam. Uh, Notion and Roam, I, I have lots of videos about both of those to dig into more, but Notion I use for a lot of structured data, uh, mostly around my business for things that need tables and charts and things that Roam just isn't very good at. Any structured data I put there, again, mostly business stuff, things like exercise logs I, I put in there just so I can quickly add up how many miles I ran this month or you know look at things like that. But for the most part, it's business related things with pipelines and clients and leads and, and that kind of stuff. And then Rome Research, um, I'm actually in right now, so I don't have a separate slide for that, but I use it a ton. And again, I'll have a link in the description with lots more videos on Rome and how I use it. But I spend probably more time in Rome than any other tool on this list. I spend most of my day in Rome, uh, not only planning the day, but uh, logging the day as it goes on, looking things up, writing book notes, ideas for videos like this one, all that kind of stuff. Uh, for reading, there's five different apps I use here. Kindle, not going to cover too much there. You guys know how Kindle works. I have a physical Kindle I use most of the time, but certainly have the apps as well. Really love that I can highlight on Kindle on the app and then pull the highlights over um, as needed to other apps. I've been using Blinkist more and more lately for short versions of books. So Blinkist takes popular books and gives you like a 20 minute overview of the book. So generally, if there's a book I think I want to read, I'll do the Blinkist version first. Uh, read Blinkist, make my own highlights, get some highlights from Goodreads, kind of put it all together. And then if I really want more, then I'll go get the full book and read it. But Blinkist is a great way to kind of dig in and check things out a little bit and really expose myself to a lot more books without spending hours and hours to read them all. I also use Pocket. This is for storing uh, videos and really for articles I want to read. If I'm going through my feed reader or social media and someone says, you need to read this great article, I'll typically throw it in Pocket and read it later. I try to set aside a little bit of time each day to dig into Pocket catch up on a few things, but it's great just to store things. And again, works great on the desktop. It has a little clipper you can throw in there. Uh, quick share tools on Android, I read my iPad, wherever I want to be, I can read those articles there, can highlight, can mark things up and great way to pull things across. Uh, I also like Feedly. I'm increasingly thinking that people need to go back to old school RSS with all the arguments about algorithms on social media and stuff. Because with an RSS feed through Feedly, I just get everything that's posted from that person. So if I subscribe to a blog, whether it's a, a company, but more often it's people and companies, you know, agencies and stuff I follow, I get every post of theirs. It's beautiful. When they post, it shows up in Feedly. If they don't post for six months, I don't waste my time going after them because it just didn't show up. I'm not having to go look around and see who's posted what's new. I can just put them all in Feedly. It's there. And that's my primary source of information. There's no filters. There's no algorithms. It's just everything I want to see. And so I intentionally try to populate it with things that I don't want to see necessarily, opposing viewpoints and stuff to make sure I get a full unfiltered view of the world rather than just what the algorithms think I want to see. I still play on social media, certainly, but I consider that more playtime and things like Feedly are more actual learning time. And then the last one I'm reading is Brain.fm. Um, similar like binaural beats stations you can find on Spotify. I actually paid for Brain.fm for a while. It's like seven bucks a month and decided, you know what? I can find the free stuff on Spotify instead. I already pay for Spotify. So you can look for binaural beats or look for like video game soundtrack stations. And those are great. I just don't like them as well as Brain FM. Uh, Brain FM has all kinds of science and stuff behind it, which I'm not sure I totally agree with, but it gives you a smooth performance for like 90 minutes, where if you find channels on Spotify, those tracks tend to be like three or four minutes, and just the starting and stopping of all the different tracks while I'm trying to focus or study gets kind of distracting, whereas Brain FM, I can put focus, let's say I want to read, it just gives me a nice smooth music for 90 minutes that just helps me focus, helps drown out the dog and the railroad tracks or whatever might be distracting, it just gets me, gets me in a good zone. For seven bucks a month, I think it's a little more expensive than it should be, but I'm happy to pay it because I think the value is certainly there. And then just a couple quick notes too on some hardware. Uh, the Remarkable I picked up last year, I'm finding this to be great at times. COVID I think has kind of reduced the usefulness of it. I think it'll be a great thing to have 
at like business luncheons and stuff where you don't want to have a laptop pulled out there. Um, but I don't often bring paper and it's a great place just to jot notes It's a digital notepad basically that syncs to the cloud and saves things over. Um, very feature poor. It doesn't, doesn't pull an email or have a browser or anything like that. It lets you write on it and it syncs the writings to the cloud. So I use it a lot for those kind of meetings. Really anywhere I don't want to be rude and have a laptop, but I still want to take notes, but don't necessarily want to use paper. Um, the other place I like this is when I take clarity breaks outside. I'll take that with me and just, again, no notifications, no buzzes. I can just kind of focus in and do that. Uh, it's a great experience writing on it and does a, does a wonderful job. Um, then I also have a new keyboard and a new mouse I've been using lately just to share those. The keyboard, I just switched to the Logitech G815. So there's the 815, which is the wired version that I have, the 915, which is wireless. At my desktop, I may as well have a wire just so I don't have to worry about batteries, but they're basically the same. It's just a good low profile mechanical keyboard. I've been a mechanical keyboard fan for a while. I had a DOS keyboard, DOS keyboard 4 professional um, I've used for a long time. This is very similar, a little quieter, still, still clicky, but not quite as loud as the DOS. Um, still a great keyboard. I'm really enjoying that one. I'll probably get a matching one at work. I like to keep my keyboards at home and work matched just so I can have that muscle memory exactly where the keys are. And actually the mouse I've used for the last few years, but I really like is the Logitech MX Master 2S. And this one I actually have our whole company using now, not because I'm forcing them to, just because it's a great mouse. It's very ergonomically friendly. Um, you can see it has lots of other little buttons and rollers you can assign to things. Um, it works on any surface. You know, a lot of the mice I have like don't work on glass tops, whatever this works on any surface very well. Um, it has a USB port in the front of the mouse. So if you need to charge it, you can still use it while you're charging. I know. Apple famously had the mouse that had the charging port on the bottom, so you had to stop using it for a while while you plugged it in, which was kind of silly. But this will last a couple months on a charge, but you can plug it in with just a normal micro USB whenever you need. And it does a great job. So that's some of what I'm doing this year, but love to see your comments on apps and tools that you found recently that you're really enjoying, and we can all learn from each other. Thanks so much.